Them too flat. Okay. Them too flat. You you need regular old school glasses, and you gotta act like you need them when you put them on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all that I can see shit. Doesn't that don't. Uh-uh. Your suit fit, you look like motherfucker would get off. I gotta, I gotta add a little cachet with the glasses on. Yeah, I them guess. too flat. Them going out to the club, you look like you about to meet Ghost from Power or something. <laughs> That's too, look I'm going for, yeah, man. Yeah, you too flat. I don't, I don't know. Don't come to court this flat ever, because they can, whatever we asking for, they just gonna look like we don't need it. So oh, yeah, you need to start that. getting you some old man suit. Them shoes is too, fr- fr- too fresh, and they look expensive, man. You, go, you look into establishment. It's a little something. Nah, you let you 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 fit the persona, but you look too rich. Oh man. Yeah. So when you go in there and you ask for the money, you need you gonna have to bust it down a little bit, man. I'm telling you, I appreciate that. Your suit gotta be like one of them granddaddy suits, like you about to sing a Negro spiritual. Not like a deacon. Like, not yes, like a southern deacon. Absolutely. Oh man, don't hit me with that one, bro. The suit's right under the Steve Harvey suit. <laughs> You gonna box me in like that, Absolutely. man? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. See? That's what I'm saying. You all sit, you cool. I'm chilling. You know? Nah, man. When you go to court, make sure you put the ugly suit on <laughs> that don't fit right, all the tailor shit. And you got you got your initials. Oh, come on, man. It's a little soft, man. It ain't, come on, you know. man. Don't, I'm just saying, if I was a client, I'd be like, hell no, take some of that shit off. <laughs> You're doing too much, man. You're looking too established. We got some, what my music, AWOL? You don't even have the tracks. He don't do this, we just hired him. Oh, he, well. He out of the community college program. Right? Oh. He's just trying to do this shit for some I love you giving other people opportunities, though, man. That's awesome. <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to the black market. What? Hold up, hold up. I'm missing something. I, I need my bell. I got to let them know the black market is open. Hurry up. Talk to them like that when they come from college. <laughs> when they, it's this little college up the street. Is it in there? Yeah. Hook me up. We do this shit like the stock market over here. We don't start nothing until we ring the bell. Uh-oh. That's the most vital part of this. Because you know what the bell means? That the black market is open. Right. That means that there's money on the floor. You need to be out hustling. Absolutely. Now here at the black market, we've had all kind of entrepreneurs, scientists, people who sell tequila, barbers, truck drivers, the lady who make party balloons and put the swishes in the cigarillos in them. We done had people come on here and make us cakes, pies, cookies, brownies, candy, all types of things that you didn't even know black people were into. We had one girl with a loofah sponge, another dude invented the socks with the grip on the bottom. These are all black owned products, man. And we had to go out here and make sure that we was handling all our legal obligations too. Cause you know, I love to be out and they be like, have you been hurt in a car accident? All <laughs> that type of, all that. Cause we know people who walking around waiting on some settlement money right now, but they might not have the right lawyer. So we got the right people in here. We got Mr. Brandon Dixon in here with us today. <laughs> tell, them, tell them about you, Brandon. What, what do you want the people to know? I'll get them to the check, Carlos, like you said. Anybody? I believe it. With the initials <laughs> on the covering let me know that, that you're not playing. Absolutely. How did you get into this? Well, I kind of transitioned into law um, because I wanted to have my own platform. I wanted to be able to have my own business and help people at the same time. Mm. So for me, it, it kind of married the two. Okay. It allowed me to have a thriving business and help people in the community get what they deserve in terms of justice and you know compensation if they get injured. What made you pick personal injury? I mean, it kind of fell into my lap. Um, when I first started out, I was doing criminal defense. I had a client you who can't, said- Can't win them all. <laughs> right. Can't win them. You got tired of coming back with the plea. Man, don't, <laughs> don't sign for that, man. This is the best they gonna be able to do. Right. <laughs> uh, although I was pretty good at criminal defense, I had a client who had an auto accident. She called me, she said- Was she a like, criminal? She wasn't a, she's, she wasn't a criminal, we can't categorize her as that. She just had a misfortunate uh, event, let's okay, just call okay. it that. So uh, she got into an auto accident, she called me up. Um, I was like, I don't know if I can help you. She was like, Brandon, I trust you. So I was like, all right, cool. I, 
I'll give it my best shot. So ended up taking her case, I ended up getting the policy limits, which is the maximum amount of money that you can recover for her case. And so that insurance company sent me the big check on my first case, and I was like, oh wow, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the, the wrong, wrong line, bid. wrong line of business. So I had to, I had to, you know, pivot over to, uh, you know, personal injury because obviously, to me that was a sign that it was my calling. Man, what was what was your process? You said that was your first time, and then you hit them for the max. Yeah, the max. Like, what was your preparation? What did you have? You said it was a big pivot. Like, you already in the law field, so this kind of outside your wheelhouse. What kind of resources did you use, and how did you figure out how to get the max? Absolutely. So, so obviously, when you go into a new area of law, you gotta contact people who specialize in that area. Right. So, at that time, as a new attorney, I just reached out to other people who were experienced in that space. Um, I said, what do I need to, you know, help this person resolve their claim? They kind of gave me the roadmap to do that. I followed their roadmap and boom, big settlement. Big settlement. Hey, easy. <laughs> if one, two, three. Yeah, Damn, for sure. Bro. So how long have you been at it? Man, I'm at 10 years as, as of this year. Really? Yeah. I, uh, when I graduated from law school, I didn't work for anybody. I hung my own shingle. That's what they call it in law. And uh, I, I'm learning something new every day. Yeah. Hung my own shingle. I, I had to hang my shingle, you know. So um, I've I've been working for myself ever since. Right. Obviously, I've had mentors that I could, you know, call upon and say, "Hey, I got this situation. How should I handle it?" And then obviously, I had to do the legal research myself to kind of understand what I needed to do to better serve my clients. I really brought you on here just so I can ask. You know, I'm an actor, and I wanted to be in a commercial. If you ever need somebody in the commercial to be like, I was injured over 80% of my body. Brandon Dixon got my money. <laughs> if you call Brandon Dixon, he'll get your money. Right, for sure. <laughs> and that's when you pop in. Ha, I'm Brandon Dixon. <laughs> I'll get your money, bro. Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's hard, right, bro. Yeah. You know I got all my notes on here. You oh, know, one man. thing that was really interesting to me is that this says, you do dog bites. <laughs> now, like, we got to talk about that. We got a niche audience, and we want to know what them dog bite settlements are. Because <laughs> people think that they dog just supposed to run free and no right. consequences or nothing. What them dog bite settlements are hitting for? So, so everything depends upon the circumstances okay. associated with a particular incident, um, which relates to like the injuries, the medical treatment, like how egregious the incident was. Um, that, that all drives the, the, the claim value up. But in particular, like dog bite cases most often happen at people's place of residence. Mm -hmm. So like in an apartment complex where you have um, other um, residents walking their dogs off the leash, but the, uh, but the apartment complex has a leash policy they haven't been, the, the residents haven't been following that leash po uh, policy. Next thing you know, they, they bite an innocent person. Or, in the alternative, the dog chases after somebody. So even if you don't get bit? Even if you don't get bit. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, it's on. Uh, it's I'm, on. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you, you, you know, you gotta be injured as a result of whatever, you know, transpires, but, yeah. you know, we, we can work it out. Absolutely. Because <laughs> people don't be wanting to put them dogs on the leash. Man. Absolutely not. And uh, that, that draws up the claim value, especially when it's a repeated issue. Have you ever, like, you ever had some friends do that? Like somebody go over somebody's house and then unfortunately get bit by the dog and then they sue their homie like, bro, we still cool, but I need this money. No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can see yeah. that happening. I, I haven't had that happen yet, though. Man. Like, where, you, where does most of your clients come from, though? Like, what's been a good place for people to get in touch with you? Like, so so most, of, most of my clients come from other clients, word of yeah. mouth, referrals for sure. Um, obviously, clients that are injured, they treat with medical providers. And so during that time, you kind of build relationships with medical providers, too. And so the medical providers, when they see that we produce a good outcome, they say, hey, you might need to consider branding if you're injured for whatever the incident may be. So it'll be former clients, medical providers, and just people in my network. So that's just in the movies where they'd be sitting out in the hallway of the ER and be like, hey, you need a good lawyer. Passing out cards and shit. You, you, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a part of the game too. Um, but, but most of my clients come from word of mouth referrals. 
That's what's up. You know, I got all my notes on here, man. All your accomplishments and good grades and shit at school. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wish I could say that I got the best grades. I, I got out. I'll say that much. Really? Well, I mean, if you work, if it's working out, ain't nobody gonna ask you what you did. <laughs> you know, you know, right, 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 right. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Georgia State. What was that like? Georgia State was was me finding myself. Um, that was undergrad. Right. Um, so. I'm a country boy. I'm from Macon, Georgia. You ain't country. That's a hey, Macon is the wild, wild west now. I, I don't know. You know, I grew up in Jones County, though, but okay. I was born in Macon. You know, Macon, they don't play. They're going to hear you say country. I'm like, who the hell he talking to? Black? I embrace it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I embrace it. You know, I can't I can't run from that. It is who I am. Um, we did a show in Macon and shut the whole city down. At the Coliseum? Bro. Man, they told us the next time we come to Macon, they need to know two months in advance. Oh! Right? <laughs> yeah, that's the traffic was messed up. There. We don't even have traffic in Macon. <laughs> that's an event, man. You know, the cherry blossom and whatnot goes down in, uh, in Macon. But, you know, Georgia State was just kind of like my introduction to Atlanta um, and, and, and what Atlanta embodies, you know. And then I'm looking at the year. Boy, that was some good years to be at Georgia State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, the city was on fire. That, you was down in the snap music era. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big t-shirts. Absolutely. Yeah. I know you had some feel out. I, I had, uh, on Metropolitan, we would get our, our white tees. Come on, man. <laughs> you worked right there with Georgia State? Oh, I know yeah. you did. Walters. Metropolitan, Walters. Slouch socks, man. all Oh, uh, no slouch. I didn't, I didn't make the slouch socks, but I had the long tees for sure. Um, a lot of my homeboys were from New York, so. They were already kind of on that that wave. Right. Um, the only be funny as hell when New York people move to uh, Atlanta and they think they can wear Tim's all summer. Oh man, <laughs> every season, what? not all summer. Every Your season. Your ankles gonna like, look like smoked neck bone when you take them boots off. <laughs> Shorts and everything, man. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So you know, Georgia State just kind of introduced me to Atlanta, where I guess people call Black Hollywood now. It, right. it, it allowed you to see affluent, successful Black people that look like you thriving in multiple areas. Yeah. So so once you get exposed to that, you say to yourself, all right, I can make it too. So so that's what Georgia State was to me. Man, I, like when I first moved to Atlanta, you know, oh, it's so much blackness here, it'll overwhelm you because you'll just get used to seeing black people do everything. For sure. I remember one day I was going down one of them streets and the fire truck was in front of me, right? I guess they was coming back from a call and it was an old black dude driving the fire truck and it's like, <laughs> He just whipped that bitch in like a Cadillac. You know, they had to jump out and right. He ain't even had no help. He was just backing that bitch straight in. I was like, boy, this is the America I want to live in. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see it all for sure in Atlanta, man. No doubt. Most definitely, man. So what's next? What you got planned for the law office of Brandon Dixon? Well, um, we, we're trying to scale. Um, I've been pretty low key with my business, you know, allowing word of mouth referrals to kind of drive the clientele to my office. So now I decided this year for year 10 to do things differently. Man, do it big. Yeah, try to level up. So this year we're, we're doing marketing in a different level. We're, doing, we're, we're being more visible. Uh, we're letting people know the services we provide so that they know who to call. You know, it's, it's more attorneys out here than Ken Nugent, you know. I just yeah. want people to know that they got somebody else making some hell of a promises. <laughs> One call, that's all. I'm telling you, you know, um, you know, I, I, I under promise, over deliver. You know, you gotta come up with a catchphrase then. Let's come up with something. Oh uh, lord, <laughs> I would try to stay away from that. Keep the stack. Low. I hit you right back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it going. <laughs> uh, let's see. I was low, so I was trying to stay away when from the trying to get that money and they acting funny. Hit Brandon Dixon. We 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 almost there, we man. Getting we, there. we 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 getting there. I, I, All right. We'll keep it real Atlanta. Okay. Brandon Dixon. I do this shit for real. <laughs> that might hit, man. <laughs> that might be it, Lowe. Ten years in, <laughs> on their ass again. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. We're there, and we gonna stay on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. You, do you have a website or somewhere they can contact you if somebody is in need of services right now? Absolutely. Uh, Brandon Dixon Law. Dixon spelled D-I-X-O-N. Um, then my office number is 404-884-8991. Well, bet you get you know you got a new client in me because I be everywhere. I love to hear. And I'm seeing dog bites. Dog, my partner just got ran off the road today. I don't know where it went, but 
<laughs> yeah, he was on the way to trade his car in and got ran over. Oh, we, we can have a consultation shortly after this uh, hey, man, interview. You know, hey, I don't ask for. I need a three percent recovery fee. And you man, know, I need uh, <laughs> we'll rap on the. Yeah, we'll the talk offline line. on that one. Yeah, but I, I know people. I know a lot of people who've right. been injured. Yeah, they didn't say nothing because the insurance wasn't right. Uh, I take care of people who take care of me, Lo. Hey, say less. <laughs> say less, man. Well, I appreciate you stopping by the black Absolutely. market. It's your first time. Don't let it be your last, man. The black market is wide open. None other than Mr. Brandon Dixon. That's how we living out here. So we'll get the info out.